Buying a new vehicle is a major event in the lives of most customers. They look forward to their new car with great expectations and excitement. And they expect it to look good and operate properly. To help you meet these customer expectations, Pro Service Skills presents New Vehicle Preparation, the key to satisfied customers. My name's Ken Bivens, and I'm the prep man here at the Chevrolet dealership. We sell cars and trucks just like the other dealerships, but our number one product is customer satisfaction. That's straight from the boss. He says it all starts with a quality prep job, and that new vehicle delivery is the most lasting impression a dealership can make on a customer. Customers aren't just buying a car or truck, but a package that includes care and service for that vehicle, beginning with new vehicle preparation. I've been a Chevrolet technician for 22 years, and now I'm responsible for prepping new vehicles at our dealership. A quality prep job requires a complete and thorough inspection of every vehicle. That's why I use the GSD-99 pre-delivery inspection procedure form on every job. Passenger cars and light trucks require this version of the 99, while 40 to 70 series medium-duty trucks use this GSD-99. A third version is used for school bus models. The GSD-99 is an organized form that establishes a routine for performing a consistently good prep procedure. It's divided into five areas, with detailed instructions and procedures. This is my guide and checklist for a quality prep job. It assures me that I'll check each step, each time, on every vehicle. I check off each operation as I complete it. That way I don't overlook or forget something. Ken Bivens, line 28. For example, if I'm interrupted, when I return to the car I'm prepping, I know exactly where I left off. When prepping a vehicle, the first step is to obtain the sheet of VIN labels and compare the VIN on the car with the one on the labels, making sure they agree. Then I remove a VIN label from the sheet and apply it to the dealership file copy of the GSD-99. Except for transportation claims, if there are any, this is the first official service history record of work done on the vehicle, so it should be identified properly. At this point, I check the window sticker for optional equipment to make sure the car is properly equipped. And I check the prep order for any components that may have to be installed. Then, if I have to install accessories, I check the trunk and see if the items have been shipped with the vehicle from the factory. If they haven't, this gives me time to order the parts before installing them later in the proper sequence. The underhood inspection is the first area to be checked according to the GSD-99. I do each step in sequence to perform a systematic vehicle inspection. Let's open it up and take a look. It varies from vehicle to vehicle, but a pre-delivery inspection is just that, a systematic inspection to see that everything is installed and functioning properly. Basically, I check by sight, feel, and sound. While checking for missing or disconnected components, I check all electrical connections and make sure vacuum hoses aren't loose, kinked, or pinched. I check that hoses and electrical wires are properly routed and aren't too close to adjacent moving or hot parts. Next, I check the movement or freeness of movement of linkage, valves, and other vehicle components. They must move properly. After this, I start the engine and check for unusual noises, like rattles, squeals, hisses, whines, or rumbles. I've learned to identify problems by the noises they generate. For example, a rumble could mean a loose clamp on the exhaust system, while a squeal might indicate a loose drive belt. When I'm done, I shut off the engine, repair noisy components as necessary, and continue my underhood checks. I check for seepage and leakage at hoses and pipe connections, and at seals, gaskets, and plugs. If necessary, I tighten loose connectors or clamps. Next, I check the power steering gear, lines, and hoses for leaks, 
and for adequate clearance from other components in moving or hot parts. I tighten clamps and connectors as necessary. I test the engine coolant protection level, and if necessary, I add either antifreeze or water to bring the cooling system up to specification. Likewise, all fluid levels should be checked and filled as required. These include engine oil, an automatic transmission, brake and power steering fluid. Then I check and top off the windshield washer reservoir. Next, I check the battery test indicator. With Freedom batteries, the green dot should be visible, indicating that the battery is holding a charge. With the high electrical loads needed for today's cars, it's important that the battery is at a full state of charge. But remember, a green dot doesn't necessarily mean a battery is fully charged. On stored vehicles, where the negative battery cable has been disconnected, I make sure the cable is properly reconnected. Once again, it's essential to make sure the battery is fully charged, particularly if the vehicle has been stored for some time. Then I remove the air cleaner and operate the throttle linkage, checking for freeness at wide open and closed throttle positions. I always use a tension gauge to check drive belt tension although normally this is required only on diesel engines. But if the belt tension of a gasoline engine is close to being out of spec, I give the customer that extra service by adjusting the tension now, so he won't have to come back later. This completes the underhood inspection, except for one last step, which is to put a check mark in the box for underhood inspection, to indicate that it is 100% complete. Again, Notice that I put small check marks by each operation as I complete them to keep track of what I've done. Now I'm ready to move to the second area, the body chassis check. As with other checks, I do them systematically. A good method is to start at the front of the vehicle and work around the car, checking for sheet metal alignment. Next, I check the hood latch for proper operation. And as another extra, I add a little lubricant to the hood hinge, the hood latch, and the striker. I open all doors, deck lids, and tailgates to check their operation and fit. If necessary, I adjust the latch, striker, and rubber bumper. Then I operate all the windows to make sure they work properly and to see that they're correctly aligned. I also check for squeaks and other noises. A little silicone spray usually cures rubbing noises that may irritate customers. I insert the keys into all of the locks to make sure they're operating correctly. Usually at this point, I install shipped parts for standard or optional accessories. Next, I check the operation of all inside and outside lights. I like to begin with the headlights, checking for both high and low beam, and adjusting if needed. I check the tail lights, parking lights, turn signals, backup lights, and license plate lights. The hazard warning lights are especially important. I turn them on and check both the front and rear warning lights. Then I check the inside lights, such as the dome, courtesy, and instrument panel, as well as the trunk or under hood lights. Next, I operate all of the standard and optional accessories such as power seats, outside mirrors, rear window defogger, and electric trunk release. If a vehicle is equipped with a clock, I take a moment to set it to the correct time. I turn on the radio, trim the antenna for local conditions, set the push button to the more popular stations, and check the cassette player if the car has one. It's another nice touch that isn't written down on the 99, but customers and salesmen appreciate the thoughtfulness. While I'm checking other accessories, I depress the cigar lighter and check to see that it heats up. So once I'm done, I make sure all electrical accessories are turned off. Then I check off the box for body chassis check. And now I move on to the third set of checks, the under vehicle inspection. First, I check the pressure on all tires to make sure it is to the manufacturer's specification. 
Tire pressure is important for proper handling and good fuel economy. The spare tire pressure should also be checked, unless it's a space saver. Next, I install items like wheel covers, trim rings, and license plate brackets. Then I check the undercarriage for damaged or loose parts, or cross-threaded loose or missing fasteners, such as bolts, nuts, and counter keys. The GSD-99 lists important areas to be checked, like the steering gear and linkage, and the tie rod clamp. I pay particular attention to the alignment of the exhaust system and clearance with adjacent parts, and make sure the catalytic converter shield is properly retained. I check for leaks seepage at all hose and pipe connections, seals, casts, and plugs, and I check all clamps. I inspect fuel, transmission, brake lines for routing, clear and clearance with moving or hot parts. And I also check fuel level of the axle and vehicles with a manual transmission. On diesel engines, I check the oil properly. I have four tests, the vehicle road test. Then I buckle up and I'm ready to go. As much as controls and accessories such as the horn, even, I can check paddles and wind noise. And I also have an opportunity to check 